So here in InDesign, we're going to have a look at a few different ways in which we can place images into a document. We're going to talk about how some of the different selection tools work with image frames and how to check the resolution of your image. So if you're printing documents out, then you know that it's going to be printing at a high resolution. So we set up a letter size document here. And I'm first of all going to place an image by going to File, Place. And when we're placing an image, we can select that image from wherever it's stored on the desktop. Now, just bear in mind that when you're importing an image into InDesign, InDesign doesn't automatically store that image in your document. It actually links back to it. So you want to make sure that you keep all your images and saved InDesign documents organized so that you don't delete them or remove them from the downloads folder or something like that. So I have my document folder set up here with an images folder and the intro to InDesign file that I'm using to work on here. And we'll jump into this folder and select an image and press open. And when we're placing an image without an image frame created, we get this little thumbnail of that image that we can then either click once and that will create a very large image of yours. And we'll have a look at some of the options for scaling things to fit in a second. So we'll just click OK to this for the moment. Then you can see here that this image is showing up very large on our document. And if we zoom out by toggling command and minus, you can see the image is bigger than even five pages of my file here. So I'm going to hold down command or control on the PC and tap zero to come back to fit to that page. And I'm going to undo that. So I'm going to go to edit, undo move item and undo place. And then I'll get this thumbnail back. So basically once we've undone the placement of the object, we can come back to this thumbnail and we can click and drag. And that will allow us to set the size of our image frame when we first place that image. Now, when we've got that selected in InDesign CC 2019, we get some information about that image frame across on the right-hand side. So we have the position there, which you can see moving across on the right-hand side when I drag this around to the right or down or to the top. And we also have the width and height of that placed image. Now, if I wanna resize my image, I can resize the image frame. And I can either do that proportionally by holding down shift, and then I can use this fill frame proportionally option, which is the first option under my frame fitting options here. Now, if you're using an older version of InDesign, you will see these options up under the control bar at the top. So you can see we have the same fill frame proportionally option up at the top. And if we rescale our box to a smaller size, and then use fill frame proportionally, it will fill it and center it and then we've got a couple of different places where we can click to select this image one is the image itself and the frame which we can then move around the other is if we click right in the middle of that frame where the circle is then we're able to move that image around within that frame so you can see i'm moving that image around within the frame and i can also by grabbing the corners here if i hold down shift so that i'm scaling this proportionally I can scale up that image within there while this brown box is selected and I can reframe that to frame off different parts of this image. So that's the first way to, to place an image in InDesign. The other way is to use the image frame or one of the shape tools. And it doesn't really matter which one you use. If we left click and hold on the frame tool here, you can see we've got the rectangle frame tool, the ellipse frame tool and the polygonal frame tool. So if we select the rectangle frame tool, we can drag out a rectangle. And then when we go to file and place, when we place an image in here, it's going to actually place within that frame. And then we can use the fill frame proportionally option to actually fit that image within the frame. Then we'll go back to the selection tool. So again, we have a couple of other options for working with these image frames. So if we come to the corners here, we can obviously increase the scale of that frame and then use the fill frame proportionally to fill that. If we click on this little yellow box that you can see here, we can round off the edges of that frame as well. And if we round off the edges and then hold down shift, we can straighten out one or more of the edges individually. So we get this nice uh, rounded edge to our frames as well. Now we can also place images within multiple frames as well. So if I grab my ellipse tool here and just draw out an ellipse, if I select this ellipse and duplicate it, I'm going to duplicate it three times across to the, the right here. And I'm going to use my smart guides to space that out evenly and keep everything in line. And then I'll hold down the alt key 
again. So I'm duplicating down here and just keeping an eye on those smart guides so things line up perfectly. And then I'll duplicate down again and it will keep things in line and also keep things evenly spaced. Now, if I select one of those circles and go to File and Place, I can place an image within one circle. And if I want to remove an image from an image frame, I can click the circle in the middle there and press Delete. And if I want to place an image so it spreads across all of those circles, I can use the Pathfinder tool to actually join these shapes together. So if I go to Window and Object and Layout, and Pathfinder. That will bring up my Pathfinder tool. And this first option on the second line here allows me to join all those shapes together. So what that means is you can see there's this one cross across all those circles now. If I keep that selected and then go to File and Place, I can grab my image and open it and then use the Fill Frame Proportionally option. And you can see now that image is placed across those different circles and I can move it around within there and reframe it and we have that nice kind of circular image grid. So basically we've combined those circles together so even though they're not joining they exist as one individual shape. And lastly if we create a rectangle frame tool here or any frame tool we can place an image within this so we'll go to file and place and we'll select this image and we'll fill that proportionally. Now, if we come to the direct selection tool, then we can select these corners independently of the others. So click away once and then click back on one corner and then we can move that one corner and that will allow us to create some custom shapes for our images to sit within. So we can create these nice custom shapes for our designs in that way. So one nice thing you can do is if you grab this shape, we'll go to edit and copy and edit and paste in place. And I'm gonna delete my image from the, the top one of those and give that a fill of magenta. Now, if I change my object content to unassigned, it will remove that cross from it and I can create a nice drop down color behind that image. So I'll leave that color there and then go to object, arrange and center back and that will give me a nice kind of a nice offset to my image in the foreground here by placing that kind of color shadow behind it. So there's one last thing I want to mention about images when we're placing them in InDesign. So if we select one of these images and go to Window and Links, then what you can see in the Links options here is down the bottom we have some information about the effective pixels per inch of our image. Now, when we're seeing things on screen in InDesign, even if we zoom right in, we're actually getting normally a preview of that image. So you can see it's quite pixelated around the edges here. And essentially, one reason that we wanna look at this is just to check that that image is gonna be above 300 pixels per inch. So if this number is above 300, then that's good. And essentially, what that means is gonna print out at high quality. Um, the low quality that we see here is a preview and if I right click and go to display performance and go to high quality display you can see the edges of that image will now sharpen up compared to the original so basically we're getting a higher quality render of that image. Now the reason that InDesign does that is so that it can work faster and display things on screen faster as you're designing and modifying your text so it's saving a little bit of uh, computer power when you're in typical display so that you don't see the high quality image but it means you can work faster and the computer can keep up with any text edits or design work that you're doing. The other useful thing that we can see here is if we have missing images we can go to the location where those images are placed anywhere in our document by clicking this link on the right and InDesign will show an error if any one of these images has a broken link. If an image does have a broken link or there's an error here, then you can either refresh your image down here, or you can relink it using the linking buttons. So relinking it to the original file, and that can happen if somebody else has, has renamed the files or moved them to a different folder. So we'll just do Command or Control and Zero, so we can view the whole page. And we'll just mention one very last thing, and that is that when we have the selection tool selected, if we come to the edge of our image and just hover outside, that's when we can rotate an image in InDesign. So if we rotate 
we can see the angle that we're rotating it at. We can also see up here in the controls when we have that visible and we can also reset the rotation up there as well. If we want to rotate the image within the frame, we can click in the middle here and then come to the edge of that brown box and just outside the corners and then we can rotate that image within the frame itself. So we can actually rotate the image but keep the frame square to the page. So wherever you see this circle, you can click it and it allows you to modify the image within the frame. So there's a few tips for working with images. I hope that's been useful. And if you have any questions about InDesign, then please leave a comment below and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.